Hi, this is Dave Johnson with another edition of Math Off Topics. Today I'm going to show how the zero state response of a system is equivalent to a convolution. You probably remember from your signals and systems course, zero state response implies that you have some driving function, but maybe the state of the system, like the charge on a capacitor or whatever, is, is zero. So we will have a driving function, which we'll call f of t. The zero input response, on the other hand, is where the driving function is zero and you've got some initial condition on the system. Maybe the charge on the capacitor is not zero. So let's get into it. So just a reminder of <clears throat> the convolution. Uh, and I showed this in a couple of previous videos, one for a discrete system and one for a continuous system. This is showing the continuous uh, convolution integral. Now, for our purposes, the driving function f is going to be 0 for t less than or equal to 0. So let me go ahead and change the negative infinity to positive infinity limits on the integral to 0 to infinity. And that's going to remind us that <clears throat> we can still do a convolution where the driving function f is 0 for uh, times before t equals 0. And also, notice I've written down a uh, first-order linear differential equation. So I'm identifying this as linear time invariant. So linear because the derivative appears to the first power. And also the dependent variable appears to the first power. Of course, the independent variable can do whatever it wants. And let's assume that lambda is greater than zero and lambda is a constant. Because lambda is a constant, that means that the, the properties of the system do not vary with time. And so that's why we say it's time invariant. So you probably remember from your differential equations course that the you can solve a general first order linear differential equation by using an integrating factor i'm not going to show how to calculate the integrating factor but in this case it is e to the negative lambda t and if we <clears throat> multiply both sides of our differential equation by that integrating factor we'll get e to the negative lambda t times dy dt minus lambda e to the negative lambda t times y. And on the right side, of course, e to the negative lambda t times f of t. And if we remember how we use the integrating factor, the left side can be rewritten as a derivative. So d by dt of e to the negative lambda t times y. We should always verify that we're doing this correctly. So the derivative <clears throat> of this product is first times the derivative of the second, so dy dt, so that's this first term, plus the second, which is this y, times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of e to the negative lambda t is negative lambda e to the negative lambda t. So that's how we get the minus lambda e to the negative lambda t here. And <clears throat> so uh, this is still going to be equal to our right-hand side, e to the negative lambda t times f of t. Now, the nice thing about this is that we can multiply both sides by dt and integrate. And when we do that, we, we want to think about changing the variable of integration from t on the right side to tau. So I'm going to do that, integrating both sides would get e to the negative lambda t times y is equal to integral from 0 to infinity uh, times e to the negative lambda tau. So I'm changing the variable of integration times f of tau d tau. And this is perfectly legal. Tau, in this case, is a dummy variable. So 
but I want to distinguish it from the variable t. Now multiply both sides by e to the lambda t. So on the left side, you get y. On the right side, you get e to the lambda t times the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative lambda tau times f of tau d tau. <clears throat> and because the variable of integration is tau, we can move the e to the lambda t inside the integral. And so I can rewrite this uh, uh, integral from 0 to infinity. Combining, we get e to the lambda times t minus tau times f of tau d tau. But this is just a convolution because if we let this be g of, let's say, t minus tau, and go back and review where this all came from. Interesting. So those are, these are the same things. So I can rewrite this as a convolution. And so, uh, now what's interesting about that is that any linear system now can be thought of as a convolution of the input f of t with something. Now, what is this something going to be? Well, based on our earlier video, we know that that's the impulse response of our system. So I hope this has been helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.